OK, I've begun recording this session for those who didn't make it. Uh, we can get started. And Linda, okay. maybe you can continue to let people in. OK, yeah. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Thanks so much for attending our info session today. So this is about uh, expanding opportunity fund program. Um, we've got a very short deck. Um, you know, the purpose of this, if you've never attended one, it's really just to share verbally and with everybody the information about the program. Um, it, it is all out there. Yes, it's in writing. Yes, it's on the website, but it's nice to get together and gather, especially if there's questions. There's things we might not have even thought of that you're going to think of and ask. Um, now's the time to address everything. Um, so we're more than happy to answer. If we don't have the answers, we will make note of it and get back with you. Um, so I'm going to start to share my screen. Okay, you should be able to see that now. So basically, we're just going to talk a little bit about the programs, qualifications, some terms. You know, what do I need to do to apply? What documents do you need? What's reporting going to look like? Um, and then the best part, the questions and answers. Um, so. I don't know how many of you read the paper. What was it a couple of weeks ago or so? Um, the governor and lieutenant governor, um, along with invited guests, held a press release about this program. I think some of the details got a little bit lost in all the excitement, and that's what we're going to do today. So this is um, uh, basically $10 million. Um, it's a state funded program and this is a loan. So this is a loan for CDFIs. Um, we set this up uh, anticipating a certain number of applicants. Uh, we wanna get this money out the door, right? So we uh, have 600,000 as the cap. If the money isn't all out the door, there'll be an opportunity for y'all to apply for more money. Um, it's a considering uh, inflation and interest rates today, all of a sudden a half point sounds really nice. <laughs> so uh, it's a nice low interest loan for CDFIs. Um, and I encourage you all to apply, even if you're not currently actively enrolled, if you, if you, this will give you some time to reach out to the uh, SSBCI team and talk to them about their programs. Um, and and get active or or start some kind of process with them okay because that is one of the qualifications that you need to be enrolled in a federally funded state program for this money um so that's this next slide there's uh some basics here so you can see the the size of your nonprofit is part of it um that you have to meet the definition of cdfi and then this third bullet point is really important. You have to be enrolled in, in one of these federally funded state programs. So the state small business credit initiative is an example um, uh, of programs that we have. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions at the end about that. And then really, if you're a CDFI, you should demonstrate. Uh, to some of you, this seems obvious, but you know, I don't know who all is on this call, so I wanna make sure I'm covering everything. You, you make sure you've got a, a board of directors with sort of that loan background or loan committee with that background, um, small business services, so that we wanna make sure folks applying have that, um, you, that, that committee or the staff uh, have the technical skills to analyze small business loan requests. Um, you know, be familiar with funding sources and do you, do you have the capacity to do this? So. These are going to be things we're going to be looking for on your applications. Um, yeah, and the terms, pretty straightforward. 
just pass the interest every year for for a while and then um on the, on the 10th year uh 11th and 12th year is the repayment period so kind of three three big payments at the end um and then uh there are some restrictions not many but the interest rate uh, and origination fees that you charge are on here um 2% over two points over prime and then the origination fee. Um, I want to pause and publicly thank Linda Silo. She is the work behind this program, uh, relatively new to deed coming up on your three month anniversary. Um, nice yeah. work on this. Thank you for your work. Thank you. And I'll uh, hand it over to you to continue talking about this program. Okay. Um, so the loan amounts that you can request um, are in increments of 100,000 up to um, 600,000. So if you don't request the max 600,000 up front, um, there may be additional opportunities to um, request for additional funding after you've exhausted your first um, um, the, the initial funds that you've received. So um, if funds are still available, um, you may be able to apply for additional increments of 100,000 up to 600,000. Um, so you talked about the term, it's 0.5% interest rate. Repayments are annual interest only. Um, and then in year 10, principal and interest are due in three payments. Um, so in order to repay the principal in full by year 12. And then the walls, and then the interest rate that you can charge for a loan is 2%. Um, the Wall Street Journal prime rate plus 2%, and the maximum closing fee is 2% of the loan value. And then the nonprofit organizations can retain all the earnings and fees and interest from the small businesses. Okay, you can go to the next slide. And then there are some required documents that you'd have to submit along with your loan application. Um, that would be um, an independent financial audit, ta IRS tax form 990, um, the organization's loan policies, procedures, and underwriting guidelines, um, the organization's current debt schedule that includes the purpose of each loan. So like, for example, the revolving loan capital or general operations an outreach plan that includes how the organization will increase lending activities in Minnesota and a board resolution to borrow money from the program. And so when you apply for the loan, there will be, um, uh, you'll be able to upload these documents with your loan application. Okay, next slide. So for monitoring requirements, it's annually by February 15th of each year. And um, that will include the number of businesses to which a loan was made, um, the business name or legal entity of the borrower, original loan amount, and balance on effective date of the report. And then for demographics, we ask that you complete um, the deed link embedded in here. So um, that'll be required for every borrower. Um, the program's impact on job creation and retention, the source of money, the source and amount of money collected and distributed by the program, so the rates and the fees, um, the program's assets and liabilities, an explanation of administrative expenses, and an independent annual audit um, to be performed in accordance with GAAP auditing standards. And then we are accepting applications right now up until December 15th. So if you follow this link here to the DEED website for our program, um, it's under the apply tab. If you go all the way down, there'll be a link to um, the application and you can apply online. And that's all so, we have. Yeah, the, just some basic information. We wanted to make sure we left a lot of time for questions. Um, so I think, let me see if there's anybody in the chat here. Uh, what does CDFI stand for? Community Development Financial Institution. So um, you don't have to be a certified CDFI. So I think it's, it's really based on the Regal Act, um, whether you fall under that definition. Um, we have more detailed information on the website 
Um, so if you're like, wait, am I CDFI? So take a look at that Regal Act and, and the definition. Will the PowerPoint be sent out to all attendees? Yes, uh, we're also recording this, so we can send the recorded version of it out. Um, can we get the application in Word form so that we can review what is involved in applying? Um, Linda, can you click forward in our application without filling stuff out and click back? Do you remember? With um, there is an option to save. If you can look through the loan application. Um, all the questions are there. If you don't finish, you there's an option to um, save and review it later, and you have 30 days to come back to complete the application. OK, great. So just don't submit it until you're done with the loan application, or you'll have to start over again. Um, is a loan recourse or non-recourse? So think of it this way. You have to pay us back no matter how well you perform. So it would behoove you to grow your revolving loan fund, uh, you know, in a healthy manner. So it, it's full recourse. So it's a loan to you and then you kind of do what you want with it. Uh, there are some restrictions naturally, but there's not a lot. This is for you to grow uh, you know, another source of funding for you to to lend money to. And think of it this way, too. If you need money for SSBCI, you can use this for that. So this is uh, this will work. Some of you that may or may not be on this call are wondering, gee, I, I need money for things. <laughs> so let's say you want to want some funding for SSBCI. This this could be a solution for you. What if my business is new and have not been able to file taxes yet? So Steve, as a guest, I'm thinking, Steve, you might be a business, which is fine that you're on this call. This call is for CDFIs that are applying for a loan from the state, and then they're going to use this money to lend to businesses like yours. Uh, Dr. Hussein Kadir, uh, would mind repeating documents to be attached? Linda, do you want to give a quick recap of what they need to attach um, yeah let me just okay so um once you click once you go to our website it should show like all the required documents that you must include with the application um so that would be the most recent year of independent financial audit irs tax form 990 the organization's loan policies, procedures, and underwriting guidelines, the organization's current debt schedule, and include the purpose for each loan, um, an outreach plan that includes how the organization will increase lending activities in Minnesota, and a board resolution to borrow money from the program. We wanted a board resolution just to make sure we don't have issues getting you all the money right away. It's just a trigger that we can use internally. Um, let's see. I have some questions about interest rates. There isn't anything about a minimum. That's a great question. There is a max. Dave Peterson, you're asking about the lowest rate all the way to prime plus two. I just want to, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption about your question. The half a point is the rate we will charge to nonprofits applying for this loan. That's fixed. That's set. The nonprofits and turn around and lend this money to small businesses. They can charge whatever they want up to prime plus two. Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, and Stan, the minimum rate, uh, Stan, if you are uh, here on behalf of a CDFI, yeah, if you want to charge a, a, a half a point to your borrowers, that's up to you. Um, so you can charge whatever you want up to prime plus two. We'll take live questions too if people want to chat. Um, welcome, maybe raise your hand or just start talking. It's pretty quiet in the room. So, yes, this is Perla Jason from MTC. 
Right. So what about the origination fee that we can charge to the borrow? Uh, two percent of the loan amount or less. Thank you. Could you repeat that question and answer? Sure. Um, Perla asked uh, about the origination fee that CDFIs can charge businesses. And the answer is up to 2% of the loan amount. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I have one more question here. Actually, it's kind of a two phased one here. Um, would like say workforce housing qualify uh, if you're going to lend it to the developer or say a uh, refurbishing a hotel? They're businesses, Linda, but what do you mean? You know, then there's a question of what's small and what's not. Linda, do you let me pull up the statute? But Linda, do you remember yep. any restrictions on purposes? We should maybe talk more about that. Um, so um, so it just says to increase lending activities with Minnesota small businesses. So it doesn't say if there's any restrictions. So it's okay. as long as it's a Minnesota small business. Um, and then we define that as fewer than 500 employees. Okay. Is there like say, uh, is there an income uh, limit or a maximum for that small business? Um, no. So okay. each, lend each nonprofit lender well, you know, you can use your own criteria and guidelines for considering loan approvals. OK, thank you, Linda. Yeah. Linda and, and Jason, this is Justin with the Entrepreneur Fund. Uh, somewhat related to that, and maybe I missed this in the presentation, is there a maximum individual loan amount to a borrower to a qualifying business? No. OK, thank you. I see uh, Gare. How you doing, Gare? You have a question? Good. <clears throat> Hi, this is Jared from HAP. I um go, going back to kind of the re restriction on on purpose. Is there a um restriction on the type of industry as well too? Are you guys following SBA guidelines, or is it does it go back to kind of what our revolving loan fund um revolving loan funds criteria is? Um, it's the purpose of this is right from the legislate from the legislation is so you can make more loans to Minnesota small businesses. Okay, is it <laughs> so? so no yeah. restriction on industries. Then. It really is. Yeah, I, you know, there's there is a lot of demand for uh, funding sources for our federally funded state programs. Um, this can be an answer for that, but it's not the only thing you can use it for. So there could have been some intent there, you know, hey, there's there could be some more funding sources for this type of loan. So, but yeah, we, um, when you, let's say you apply and everything works out and we send you your loan agreement, you'll see that it's, it's pretty loose uh, about that. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Just to pile on to that question. Uh, what about <clears throat> entity structure for entity types like uh, E Corps, S Corps, LLCs? Can every, is it anything that's a small business? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. correct. Okay. okay, great. Thank you guys for this webinar. Yeah, oh, our pleasure. I have one more question, Jason. Mm hmm. Um, we're actually a nonprofit uh, economic development organization, which we lend out to small businesses and so on and so forth. We have our company has our own revolving loan funds, and but we also seek dollars from USDA, you know, for the small business uh, related uh, loans. With and I, I don't believe we're a CDFI. We have a separate board 
Um, we we have a loan committee that's comprised of a couple, well, an ex-banker, he's now a business owner, and a banker, and then a financial person. Uh, and then once they approve our loans, um, we send out a loan package. They got to provide us with everything that's necessary, kind of like in a way like a bank would. And then once our loan committee would approve or deny the loan, then it goes to our five member board and which they're business owners and so on. So would we, if we filled out this application, would we technically kind of qualify? I don't think we're considered to be a certified CDFI. You don't have to be certified. You just have to meet the definition of CDI under the Regal Act. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of CDFIs are certified, they're getting federal dollars, um, but we have, uh, you, you have the ability to be a, meet that definition as a CDFI and not be certified yet and still be eligible for this program. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I want to add too for all of our existing partners and future partners. Our Office of Business Finance, indeed, for that matter, we cannot do this without you. Uh, when I say this, I'm talking about economic development in the state of Minnesota. Um, I've, I've been here a little over four years, so I was here like pre-COVID. And boy, have we leaned on CDFIs uh, through COVID, post-COVID. There's a lot of money that came out of the last legislative session. So I just want to thank you for the work you've done up till now and the work you're going to keep doing. We're, we're so grateful for the work uh, in, in the state of Minnesota. We, we could not do this without you. So thank you. I have one question. Can I go ahead? Please. Is there any admin fee that the deed will charge CDFIs? Just the 0.5% the each year. So that's... That's how we're going to pay ourselves. OK, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Um, Jer? Yes, uh, one more question. Is this application only open this year or is this going to be an annual? Will the, will the program be open annually? Great question. So we we wanted to put a deadline so we could fairly score all of the applicants. And if there's still money left over, we will reopen it as soon as plausible. So it's not necessarily going to be annual. So let's say we get eight million out the door. We're we are going to open it up for additional allocations. Um, I don't know, Linda, have we talked about opening up for ever, anybody, even new applicants after that? Um, I imagine no, we, not, yeah, so not yet. So it's hard to know until after the 15th when we've had a chance to number one see okay did more people apply than we have money and that's where that scoring will come in really handy um, where we have to you know divide so scarcity would be a good sign um, more than likely there might be some money left over and you know what those who are using it all what we'll probably do is they can just ask for more so if you're a busy CDFI, you get into this program. I, you know, the way we see it happening is, hey, you you've used your 600 grand, come back for more until it's gone. So kind of a first come, first served after this December 15th round is kind of how we planned it out. So, I mean, we just don't know what if we only get three applicants. Um, you know, that's another story, right? Then then you're right. Maybe we have to say we need to do another round and, and another announcement, that kind of thing. But I have a feeling people are going to want this money. I mean, you can stick it in a 2% money market fund while you're getting the money out the door, make money over here and while you're lending it out there. I think we did put a restriction on how long you can sit on it, though. We don't want people sitting on it at a 4% CD for 10 years. <laughs> so. It is for lending. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see new messages in the chat. Admin.
All right. Well, you, you got us. Any other questions? Feel free. Jump in. Hey, Jason. Um, yes. This is Stan again. Uh, I see a message in here from Steve. He's a guest. I was trying to figure out how to reply to him. Uh, if, if he could reply basically where he's located at. We have a very small geographic area that we lend in. So uh, if he happens to be in our county, we could work with him. So. Hey, yeah, Steve, what what county are you in? He's in Anoka. Lot, Anoka, we have a lot of lenders on the call here. So, um, Perla, do you cover that territory? I know you have sort of a, no, I didn't think so. Steve, You're you say now. you live in Anoka, but where is the business located? And Steve, you can uh, contact Linda or I after the session, and we can share with you some programs that we fund. Um, the Twin Cities is rich with nonprofits that provide lending uh, and mentoring and classes, uh, a lot of options. So more than happy to chat with you offline. Um, Share my screen again so you can get see our contact information here. Yeah, basically what we would do is um, give you a email or phone number and a website of a couple nonprofits that that work in your where your business is located. Yeah, Jer, he reached out to Hmong American Partnership, great organization. Oh, can you pull up our contact info? I think Steve's asking for it. You bet. Here it is again. Hey Jason, this is Justin again, Entrepreneur Fund. Um, could yes. you the 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 slide deck? I think maybe you said you're going to send it out. We, um, that link to the I think it was some sort of demographic form that we need the the um, participants to to fill out. I don't. We can't click that as we're viewing it here. Right. So if we can get that deck, or if it's on the website, I wasn't sure if it was or not. So. No, I don't know if we have it on the website yet. And actually, it's no. the same one we make you do for ELP. Okay. Sounds yes. Good. So Easy enough. it's kind of. Yep, yep, it's it's for our entire office. So any and all programs, uh, you know, you'll see coming out of our office are going to have that demographics link. It's kind of, uh, somewhat of a new thing, so. Sure. OK, thanks. question Jason I don't know if you guys answer this what's your time frame as far as um, approval and disbursement of funds great question I didn't even cover that thank you for asking um, so we took into account the holiday season um, you know there's a, a New Year's this this weekend coming up we've got uh, Thanksgiving we've got you know the new the other New Year coming up in January 1st um so we know we won't be working some days um and we anticipate having all the applications scored and make a recommendation to the commissioner uh roughly mid-january um we already have the load agreements uh drafts completed we have legal looking at those we did that in anticipation that they'll be ready to go so our hope is that it's just going to be a plug and play situation where we plug in your, you know, your CDFI name and address and contact information and and send you those agreements for review. Um, so, yeah, and then the idea is once it's signed that we can just disperse all of the money right away and get it in, in your hands. So I think January, mid January to be done scoring. 
maybe, I don't know, two weeks ish. I'm going to say the word ish because you know how things can go. Sometimes they're they work out perfectly. Sometimes it takes longer. But yeah, hopefully by the end of the month, early the next month, you'll have money in your hand. That's the idea. Thank you. Welcome. So we can also take questions offline after the fact. Um, feel free to message uh, by email or call us. You know, if you have specific questions, we're more than happy to sit down with you in a just a phone call or a Teams chat um, for additional questions. Any other questions, chat or live? Wonderful. Well, I can't thank you enough again for attending today uh, and your strong partnerships here in Minnesota, working in partnership with us. And I look forward to seeing your applications and getting uh, some money in your hands so you can do some more lending. All right. Okay, bye everyone. Bye everyone. Thank you all.